Hello viewers, welcome to yet another devotional using the daily fountain of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Please invite your family and friends to join us. Let us pray. Good morning, dear Lord Jesus. We acknowledge that without you we can do nothing. As we start today, we are starting it in your name and in the power of your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that your word that we are about to listen to at this hour will start to work great things in our hearts, in our lives. Let your word propel us to live our lives to place you so that at the end of today, when we look back, we shall have every cause to glorify your holy name. Speak to us in the language that we shall understand. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Thursday, the 5th of October 2017. And our topic for this devotion is sovereignty of God. And our text is taken from Romans chapter 9, verses 14 to 23. I read. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I raise you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he adds whom he wants to harden. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who resists him, for who resists his will? But who are you, O man? to talk back to God. Shall what is formed say to him who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does, this not, does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery of noble purposes and some for common use? What if God, choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of his wrath, prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory? This is the word of the Lord. First be to God. Here goes the commentary. The 15th verse of today's passage, which Paul quoted from Exodus chapter 33, verse 19, seems as if God is partial, but there is no unrighteousness with God. Election is a product of grace, not of human effort or works. God is sovereign in his work and acts according to his own purpose, due to his own will and purpose. So, it was not a matter of righteousness or justice. It is rather of the sovereign will of God. As the sovereign God, he has the right to show mercy to whoever he chooses. In fact, he is not under any obligation to extend mercy to anyone. Therefore, Expressing his mercy does not depend on man's desire. 
no one deserves or can hand God's mercy. God is holy and must punish sin. He is loving and desires to save sinners. If everybody is saved, it will deny his holiness. But if everybody is lost, it will also deny his love. The solution to the problem of God's divine election, it is indeed a privilege that you and I have been elected. After we have been elected, it is incumbent on us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Food for thought. It is mercy that keeps us out of hell by not giving us the punishment we deserve. And, but grace gets us into heaven by giving us the rewards we do not deserve. That is a quotation from that uh, musician, Belly Hill. Dearly beloved in Christ, in addition to the commentary on today's passage, I wish to point out that verses 15 and 18 clearly explain the sovereignty of God, which is not subject to questioning by anybody. Apostle Peter testifying goes to God's intervention in the life of Cornelius, a Roman centurion says in Acts of Apostles chapter 10 verses 34 and 35 that I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism but accepts men from every nation who fear him and who do what is right. Beloved in Christ, I see God's sovereignty from the point of view of, un of God's unlimited wisdom which transcends human comprehension. He who created you knows what you will become and how you will get there. It is therefore in your own interest to trust him completely and follow him closely. We must not resist the urge to grumble or complain. Instead, let us call on him for grace and he will surely help us. The good news I have for us today as we listen to this message is that the Bible says in James chapter 2 verse 13 that mercy triumphs over judgment. In other words, irrespective of your present situation, because God is sovereign, His mercy can make great record out of your condition. So, call on him this day, and he will hear you. Remember that Ezekiah cried out to him, and he changed his verdict on him. Jabesh also called on him, and his situation changed. By the same token, the mercy of God, even as we are in the mood of the celebration of the independence of our country, can locate our nation, Nigeria, and restore our past glory. Therefore, brothers and sisters, Christ, I mean, Jesus Christ, our Lord, can connect you to the throne of God's mercy today, if only you will cry unto him. Before we conclude this devotion. I want to once again call on everyone to please join us same time, same station, tomorrow morning for yet another edition of the devotion. If you are led to sponsor this program, please contact the email address and numbers showing on your screen. God bless you. Let us pray. Help us, O oh God, 
to be ever thankful for your sovereignty and how we have benefited from your sovereign election of our salvation. Grant, O Lord, even as our hearts are full with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.